Rachel Hayless to call for the snitch, just on that as in that job that he is in Quinnis Etha, I Quinn's Quinana Hela, High School Quinn's in the Tacho. Today our school is acknowledging Orange Shirt Day, a day we when we honor the children that were sent away to Indian residential schools throughout Canada and learn about the history of those schools. It is a day to remember what happened, reflect on its continued impact on our country, and focus on ways that we can continue to participate in reconciliation between Indigenous and non-Indigenous communities. Orange Shirt Day came into existence because of the bravery of Phyllis Webstead, a residential school survivor who, became, who began to tell her story in the early 2000s as a way of healing and recovering from her time in residential school. Since 2013, Orange Shirt Day has become recognized throughout Canada. The day was chosen because it was around this time children were forcibly removed from their homes and sent to into schools each year. Phyllis was going to school, and like students, she went back to school shopping with her grandma, where she was excited to buy an orange t-shirt. But unlike most six-year-olds across the country, Phyllis because she was First Nations, was required to attend the St. Joseph Mission Indian Residential School just outside of Williams Lake. Phyllis was just six years old and she was so excited to attend school for the first time, particularly because of her new orange shirt. But things did not go as Phyllis had anticipated. When she arrived at the school, she was stripped of all her clothing, including her new orange shirt. Phyllis said, I didn't understand why they wouldn't give it back to me. It was mine. The color orange has always reminded me of that and how my feelings didn't matter, how no one cared and how I felt like I was worth nothing. All of us little children were crying and no one cared. Orange Shirt Day is now acknowledged across Canada as a way of remembering the children and families who, whose lives were changed forever by Canada's Indian residential school system. The motto of Orange Shirt Day is every child matters. And this is important to Phyllis and so many other survivors because they did not feel that this was true when they attend attendance. Numbers can tell a story and we are going to learn why some of these numbers matter when we are talking about residential schools in Canada. Over the 100 years that residential school existed in Canada, 150,000 First Nations, Métis, and Inuit children were forcibly taken from their parents, families, and communities and made to attend residential schools. These schools were often far away from their home communities, and when they arrived, they were often separated from their siblings and told that they were never allowed to speak their own language while at school. Many students could not return home in the summers or during the holidays and were sometimes separated from the families from the school experience. It is estimated that approximately 6,000 children died and never returned home after arriving at the residential schools. Parents and families were not often informed if their child had died and there are still many families who do not know what happened. When historians studied the numbers relating to deaths in residential schools, they noticed something astounding. Canadian soldiers in World War II had a better chance of surviving the war than Indigenous children who attended residential schools. Residential schools are not something from Canada's ancient past. The last residential school in Canada closed in Saskatchewan in 1996. That was only 24 years ago. Twelve years after the last school closed, the Government of Canada under Prime Minister Stephen Harper officially apologized for residential schools and the trauma and harm that continues to be caused by them to this very day. It was an emotional day for survivors and their families, but finally acknowledged that the Canadian Government was legally at fault for residential schools. In Canada today, there are approximately 80,000 residential school survivors who whose lives continue to be impacted by the Canada's residential school system. These impacts extend far beyond the individuals into the families and communities. This generational trauma continues to have a significant impact on Indigenous communities all across Canada.
We need to keep talking and telling the truth about residential schools in Canada. But this is not the only story we need to talk about. Indigenous people are more than the stereotypes that people have of us, and we are more than the trauma of our past. I am a brave survivor. We are survivors. We are Indigenous. We are resilient. I am Wisinich and a strong Indigenous man. We are finally free. We are worthy. We are a nation. We are rich in our culture and I am a legacy of a residential school survivor.